Come spend a little time with me. Come spend a little time with me. I'm waiting on. Come on, we talking. I'm gonna bring you in too. I'm gonna bring you in. We go talk back and forth. Live familia. What's going on? Good evening. Just took me a nice quick shower so I can come back down here, hang out with y'all. Shoot, Lakita up in the house. Shoot, La Hazel up in here. TC, TC up in here. Y'all share this for me. Please, ma'ams. Please, bricks. Unique surprise up in here. Let's see. Nicole, Anitra, Deidre, Topeka, Elise, Chantel, Nicole. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Hey, honey, B. I Candy, Carney, Lonnie up here, Tasha up in here. We gonna talk. Hey, bricks. I get, I'm, I'm working Facebook Live and I'm working Instagram Live. So I'm going to bring some of y'all on too so we can talk and we can hash it out and we can get better together because that's what we do. We get better together. We get better as a family. Let me see. Thank y'all for the shares. Ella, Sharita, Lakita, Tara up in here. We got everything working. Hey, beautiful bricks of mine. Hey, beautiful bricks of mine. The most beautiful women on the planet. Tara, Gloria up in here. The most awesome group on the planet. My bricks. What's up? Hey, Nancy. Show Amber up in here. What's up, beautiful people? Now, let's talk. Let's talk. And if you're available to talk, say I'm available. And I'm going to bring you on. Because I want to talk about uh, topic of the night. How to stay on track and how to stay motivated on your weight loss journey. How to stay motivated, how to stay on track. How do you do it, coach? How do you do it? What's the secret? Because I, I always see, you know, your, your people, you know, as before and afters, no matter where they are on the planet, they always getting it done. How do you do it, coach? No matter who it is, no matter what time of the year it is, no matter, you know, who, what, when, and well, all shapes, sizes, you get it done. Let me tell you, the first thing you have to do, first thing you have to do, you have to eliminate your excuses. You have to eliminate your excuses, okay? First of all, you have to start blaming you on why you fail. Because when you can start blaming you, you start taking responsibility versus it's somebody else's fault. I had somebody the other day say, you know what, I gained three pounds and I don't know how I did it. Negro, you know how you did it. I, I got $10 saying food was involved. It does not take a Harvard Law degree <laughs> to figure out that you got bigger because you kept eating. And it wasn't nobody else's fault but yours. So when you can take responsibility, you can take your power back. Because as long as it's somebody else's fault, it's your job's fault, it's your kid's fault. You know, the only reason why I eat this way is because my man likes me bigger. And he told me not to lose too much weight because he don't want me to lose my butt. Or he don't want my head to look too big. Or I don't want to look crackish. But it's your life and it's your body. Let me say it again. It's your life and it's your body. Okay. So you have to take responsibility for you. Things don't happen to you. Things happen because of you. And anything that happens to you, think about it like this. It has to have permission to do so. Things that come into your space, things that come into your life, things that agitate you and irritate you and get on your nerves and bother you to the nth degree has to have your permission to do so. Think about that. Every issue of life you're going through right now, stop for a second and, and think about everything you're going through right now. Think about it. Everything you're going through right now at this present moment has to have permission to bother you. And the only person 
who can give that thing authority and give that thing life is who? You. You have the power, but if you don't know you have the power, if you don't exercise your power, if you don't exercise your right, then you might as well not even have it. You got to take responsibility for your life. You got to start walking in authority with your life. I'm, I'm speaking about your body. I'm speaking about your life issues. We talking life here too. We just ain't talking weight loss because everything trickles into weight loss because you didn't get big because you like to eat. That was part of it. But there's other triggers in your life that set you off that lead you to emotional, you know, to become an emotional eater or an emotional drinker. Am I lying? Am I lying? Right. So you got to start walking into your authority and being more aggressive with your life and anything that you mess up, know that you can clean up. Let me say that one more time. Anything that you mess up, you have the right and the authority to clean up. Some of y'all still, you know, serving life sentences. Okay, again, let yourself out of your own little prison and let's let's move. Let's move. Okay, now going back to the excuses, you got to let those things go. You got to just drop your excuses. Okay, because I hear them all like all the time, and I've heard them for years. You'll hear stuff like, "Coach, the only reason why I stopped is because you know life happened." I got busy. Who ain't busy? Who ain't living life? Who's not experiencing life like everybody? You just chose to turn your head, get distracted, and then I'll do it tomorrow, turn into I'll start next week, turn into oh, it's a month. Oh God, I don't even want to see, I don't even want to talk to him because I feel so ashamed. I had somebody hit me up the other day uh, who said, you know what? I know I need to come back and I know I need to see you, but I have messed this thing up. So I'm like, so does it get better by you not coming back around? <laughs> Do you get fine by avoiding me? Do you get better by not working out? Do you get better by continuously doing the same things and participating in the same things that, that got you there in the first place and just continue to continue to do it? She'll be back next week. <laughs> Life happens. I fell off. Uh, I got discouraged. I hear it all. I, I got discouraged. And I always remember first few letters, first three letters of discourage. This, that means not having. I have no courage. Discouraged. And some people get so discouraged so quickly. And that's why you can't finish nothing. Because you're easily, you think it's going to happen tomorrow. It took you years to get big. It took years for you to get that weight on you. So if you don't lose 30 pounds in two weeks, that don't mean you quit. Because <laughs> again, it took you a while. Now, I'm the exception to the rule because I can erase some stuff in your life real quick. Whatever, it, it, could, it could have taken you five years to put on 100 pounds and I get that thing going in five months, okay? But you got to stay long enough to see it. You got to stay long enough to see it. And, and sometimes you expecting a two-week miracle when the requirement is five months. Again, you will hear me say this all the time. For every want, there is a requirement. For some of y'all to get that 100, you, you got to hang in there five months, to get at 60, you got to hang in three months. You can't just be like, oh, it's a month. It didn't have No, you quit too soon. You quit too quick. And, and a lot of y'all don't get your blessings and you don't get what you're supposed to get in life and get out of life because you quit too quick. You too quick to turn your stuff around, walk away, get all huffy. You know, somebody say something to you, you know, that you don't like. And all you're doing is shutting your stuff down. you shutting your stuff down. And again, that same thing. And again, if I'm devil, I'm poking at you all the time. Because I know that's your trigger. And you got to start looking at life 
bigger than what you are because as Coach Michael Burke would always say, you can't, sometimes you can't see the picture when you're inside the frame. You can't see the picture when you're inside the frame. Let me give you something good. Again, devil knows your trigger. And devil knows what you're supposed to have, you know, just like God knows you're, what you're supposed to have. But if I know you have not mastered patience, I'm going to try you. I'm going to play all up in your head because your mind is a battleground. You know, a lot of times y'all will just... Shh, have you ever just seen somebody, and it might be you, have you ever just seen somebody, if you left them alone long enough, and you let them sit around for a little bit, they'll make a mistake because they done sat around too long, and they done over-processed, and over, you know, was doing that overthinking thing, and then by the time, you know, they done sat there, and it's done got all discombobulated, they done made a mistake because they done sat too long and started thinking too long. If that's you, say, you talking to me, coach, you stepping on my toes. You, you, sometimes, again, you got to understand and be honest with yourself with what are my triggers? And is this trigger, this one particular trigger, is this one thing standing in the way of getting my stuff? I know mine is patience. I'm not the most patient person, but I know in order for me to get to the next level that I'm supposed to hit, I got to be patient. I got to stay aggressive, but I also got to be patient versus uh, doing what I normally do and messing myself up by overthinking things, being too quick to react, to do because it didn't happen when I thought it should. So I'm going to speed it up versus, you know what, let me just fall back and work aggressively, keep my head down, do my due diligence. And when it works, it works, but I'm not going to force myself and I'm not going to force myself into a bad choice because, you know, I've been sitting here too long. And you can't do that. Feel me on that. You can't do that. You'll make more mistakes because you're bored. That relationship you messed up. You messed it up because you was bored. Right? Right? That time you quit that job, you were, you were bored because you were thinking, oh, man, I can do better than this. And then you didn't do better than this. <laughs> I'm just saying, you can mess yourself up. And I always remember uh, this part too. Some, sometimes when you're looking at yourself and you're being real, real honest, you got to say, okay, I got to start working on stuff. People don't work on themselves anymore. A lot of times people just resign to saying, you know what? This is how I am. Take it or leave it. And most, most of the time people will leave it and leave it with you. And it continues to rear its ugly head in different situations. But again, if I'm devil, I'm setting you up every time. Every time you get excited about something, I'm going to mess with your feelings. I'm going to mess with your emotions because I know you're driven by your emotions. And if I can get you off track, make you feel bad, who am I talking to? If I make you feel bad, if I get into your head, if I can just get into that emotion, get into that emotional side of you i can get you disconnected from your power i can get you disconnected from your peace i can get you disconnected from your joy boom you do that self-sabotaging thing and then you screw that whole thing up if that's you say so you talking to me coach let me see michelle says i needed this tonight. michelle you want to talk let me see let me talk to you michelle let me see if i can bring michelle on let's talk Michelle. On. see if you, you want to talk to me yeah you get you just gotta you gotta understand some of the stuff that sets you off and some of the stuff that's really, really stopping you from becoming great versus, you know, doing what most people just do, just ignore it and then just say, this is just how I am. This is how I am. Take it or leave it. You know, I'm too old to change. You know, all them lies you be telling yourself <laughs> all the time that you done made yourself believe. And so you cancel your blessings because you never address stuff. You much rather run away from your stuff than face your stuff like an adult. You know, you much rather run. But what happens? Get tired, and you gonna, gonna get tired. Hey, sir. hey, hey, Michelle. Michelle, let me ask you this. Hey. Let me ask you this, baby. What, what's your Achilles heel? What's your Achilles heel? What, what's the one thing that's blocking you? Me, me, myself, 
Okay. Yeah. How so? Now, let me ask you this. Is If I'm the devil and I want to mess with you and I want to bother you, how do I get to you? Tell me that I can't do it. Tell me that I can do it and I'll show you I can't. I am the biggest self-sabotager I could possibly be. I've started your program for four years and I keep stopping because I start to lose it. Start to, you know, the pounds start to come off. I start to feel good. I'm like, yeah, I can do this. And then I'm like, nah, no, I really can't. And then I stop every time. And that's with everything, like everything, relationships, just life. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this. Why are you, why are you afraid of succeeding? Why are you afraid of winning? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. You don't, you don't know. So can I ask you this? Do you think that you've gotten used to getting to a certain point and turning that thing around and just quitting? Probably. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What are you afraid of? I don't know. I don't know. I've always, I've always just self-sabotaged myself with okay. everything. Okay. So let me ask you this better question. When are you going to start winning? When are you going to start finishing? When right now. Decide? Right now. Okay. And I keep telling myself that, but then in two days, I'll be like, no. okay, I, I can't do uh, this. Uh, this is what I need for you to do. <laughs> When, when you when you join me, when you join us, I'm gonna need for you to check in with me every day. Okay. Deal. I can do deal. You, you gonna be you gonna be my accountability partner? Cause look, cause I need you. Okay. Okay. Right there. So I need to hear from you because um, Les Brown Les Brown said something that was real real cool one time. He says he said you have losers and then you have people. Who haven't figured out how to win yet? And guess I can what? Relate. And guess I can what? Relate. And guess yeah. what? I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to win because I've helped okay. a lot of people win, and we gonna win together. Deal. Deal. So before yeah. I leave, so one more thing. Tell me in the next twelve months because it's me and you, and it's and it's everybody all over the planet. <laughs> tell me the top three things that you're going to accomplish. Tell me the top three uh, things you're going to accomplish in the, look, in the next 12 months. Okay. Um, lose the weight. Okay. Start a business. Okay. Um, I can't think of a third. Uh, self okay. Stop, so, stop self sabotaging. That was a mouthful. Okay. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this one more question. Let me ask you this one more question. Has your weight stopped you from a whole bunch of stuff because I noticed that you said weight oh, yeah. and then you said yeah. all that other stuff. So is is the weight the key to the other stuff in your life to where it's kind of like if I defeat this one thing, I'll be able to defeat everything that's behind it? Yeah. Because of my weight, my self-esteem is really low. Like I don't want to go out in public because I feel awful about myself so I don't want to be in public I don't want to start a business and have people come to me and be like um no thank you so I feel if I can lose the weight first get my self-esteem back up then I could tackle more and more let me give goes on. let me let me give you something good once you defeat that weight part and this is for a lot of people that's watching once you defeat that weight part of your life you're going to defeat the rest of your life because that's the one thing that's holding you back from having everything you're meant to have because it's affecting, yeah, your, it's, it's affecting your money. It's, a, it's affecting that business and you probably date the same type of person maybe. Yeah. Because definitely. Be, look, you said definitely. And, and then, <laughs> yeah. look, you know, I date the same person. And you know what? And you and you probably let me fortune tell. And you probably date below your yourself in terms of yes. dating below your standard because 
Somebody makes you feel a certain way, like you're less than, and then they got you. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Look, yeah. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna hold your hand during this process. So look, make sure you hit me up. Look, I'm gonna put my I'm gonna put my number here, so I can personally help you because you mine. Because at the end of the day, I got to make sure you're good, and we're gonna finish this thing together. Because let me let me show you this. From your relationship to your money to your self esteem, everything is tied into your weight. So let's go ahead and finish this thing off together. Can we agree? I agree. That's what's up. Love you, baby. Love you. See you, Michelle. My number's here. Hit me. Okay. Now, if that's your situation, if that's your situation, and because of your weight, or there's certain things you haven't done because of your weight, and you're afraid of rejection because of your weight. Say you say you talk to me, coach. I hit I hit that dating thing on the head, didn't I? <laughs> because I know how it goes. It's kind of like you see the you see the beautiful woman, but then as a dude, you like, oh, she got low self-esteem. So let me talk to her a certain way, make her feel like uh she should be lucky to have me. And then, you know, even though she's really the prize, but she don't know she the prize. So let me talk to her a little bit different and just bring her down. Because she already got low self-esteem, so she's going to feel like she's lucky to have me. So all I got to do is say this, that, and the other, make her feel bad. Boom! Got her for as long as I want her. Is that really how you want to live? Is that really how you want to date? Is that really how you want to live your life? Let me see. Todd, let me bring you on. Let me bring you on, Tar. Has your weight made you settle? Hey, Coach. How are you? Hey, gorgeous. Now, let me ask you this. Has your weight stopped you and prevented you from doing certain things in life? Yes, a lot. Um, Mine is not really like the dating because I'm married, but mm -hmm. mine is like with going out. I don't feel sexy. I don't like. I don't feel it at all. Okay. I, I like you know people will say, "Oh my god, you look you look nice," but I feel like a big balloon. Okay. Like are you, are you the type of person that shoots down compliments? Yes. Okay, let me tell you let me tell you why you stop doing that. Because there's gonna come a time when you, you know, look awesome and you look the way you wanna look. But if you don't have this part right here right, yeah. and you don't already ex and you don't already within yourself say, you know what? Sometimes you just gotta pretend like you're already there because sometimes people see you. For who you are, but you don't you don't accept you for you. You see what exactly. I'm saying? So the per so the person who's complimenting you, they see the, the beautiful, the gorgeous, the sexy. Yeah. But so it's kind of like you you got to start buying into what other people see in you. Yeah. So you can walk yourself down that path because if you don't, then when you hit what you know the numbers that you want to hit you'll still be the same person who's shooting people down when they compliment you and still can't find the value in yourself. So you need to start accepting those things now so you can start walking yourself down that path of just accepting you and then that's going to make you want to go out more and it's going to make you start feeling sexier because it's like, dang, I got myself about six, seven compliments. But again, if you're always shooting them down, do you shoot down the compliments from your husband? I do. I do. Like when he tell me all he tells me all the time I'm beautiful and he'll say, Oh, look at you. And he called me a stallion. He said I'm a sexy stallion. And Come on. I look at that and I'm like, that's a horse. That's that's huge. And he was like, No, 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 no. Don't do it. Yes. And that's what he that's that's the thing. He you know, he does the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. Look, look, no. If anybody
somebody calling you a stallion, a quarter horse, a brick house, yeah, roll with it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because that's that's sexy. But again, if you always deflect when somebody's compliment you, two things are gonna happen. They ain't gonna compliment you no more because now you done made them feel bad. Yeah. And then and then two. You'll, ne you'll never accept what people are saying about you, so you you deny yourself feeling good about yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like, I really, since I started working out, I've been I've been really trying to do stuff because he's telling me like he see a difference, and he was like, "Babe, you looking real good. You're looking good." And I'm like, "Oh, thank you." And so so I'm doing better, but inside mm -hmm. I just want to feel. You know what I mean? Like inside, I really don't feel it, but I'm kind of making myself uh-uh so, I already, I already act like you look do me a favor if you don't do nothing else for me do this act like you've already arrived okay I act like you've already act like you've already climbed the top of the mountain and you've already made it okay i definitely yeah will. starting today yeah. and now look can we agree well, i agree watch this you look beautiful Thank you, Coach. And there you go. Look, <laughs> I, look that, that's what I'm talking See, you getting better already. Yes, I appreciate it. That's what's up. Well, let's go get it, baby. Love you much. All right. Love you, Coach. Love you, baby. See, sometimes, sometimes you just got to, look, sometimes you just got to act like you've already made it. Let me. 10 pounds. I had to pray. And ask God to help me be disciplined and take away my addictions to sweets and it worked. Let me give you something good with that too. Sometimes you got to stop thinking about your addictions. <laughs> because a lot of times if I'm always, I always remember this, the things that you give your attention to, it grows. Okay. The things you don't give your attention to, it dies. So if I'm always thinking about candy, 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 candy. Man, I want me some candy, 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 candy. Or, shoot, man, I can't wait to have me a piece of that cake when I get home. Man, that cake is calling me. Watch this. When was the last time you thought about a butterfly? You don't think about butterflies, do you? You don't ever wonder about no butterflies. Or that little, hey, have you ever just paid attention to a leaf that's outside your house? Have you ever just really just paid attention to it? No. Again, the things that you give your attention to will grow and it will magnify until at some point you feel like you got to have it. But if I don't give my attention to it and I substitute one thing for another, so it's kind of like instead of me... Um, thinking about food, I started thinking more about, dang, let me read a little bit more. And now I turn my focus from eating all the time to let me learn more. So I'm going to go ahead for the next 30 days. And you got, and you can make it fun too. For the next 30 days, I'm going to read, you know, several pages. Me and my honey, we do this. We, we try to read like 10, 11 to 15 pages per night. Okay. That's our thing. So it's like when you change your focus, again, the things that you focus on will grow and expand. But the things that you kind of choke out and the things that you kind of deny, guess what? It dies. So really, really, really start focusing on the things that you want. Because, it's, again, it's life. Uh, it, keep thinking about bad stuff and, and keep worrying about stuff and keep being fearful of stuff. And the stuff that you worry about will knock on your door and, sh and show up knock on your door and show up let me see let me talk to Kiara let me bring you on baby it mean you telling me you had a low point we gotta talk we gotta have a conversation we gotta have a conversation come talk to me what's going on with you Come talk to him. Kiara. Let's see if we can get you on so we can talk. 
See what's going on with you. Let's bring you on. Are you available to talk, my dear? And isn't this beautiful that on this broadcast, we think there's so many different issues and it, and it all ties in together. That's just beautiful. It says connected. Come on through, babe. Let me see if you here. We talking problems. We talking issues. We laying it all on the line. We putting it all on the table. Because again, that's what this whole program is about. Making sure the total you is good. Not just your pooch. Not just your high round behind. Not just your sexy but The total you. We got to make sure all phases of you are good. It says connecting. I'm trying to bring you on. Let me see if it doesn't let me bring you on. Let me see if it let me bring you on. Hey, Dion. So we talking problems. We talking issues. If you got problems, you got issues, lay it out. We're going to talk about it. Let me see if it'll let. It says connected, but it ain't let me bring you on. Let me see. Keep drinking water. Good stuff out. Let me see. It ain't let me bring you on. Lord, I, I so wanted to talk to you. Let me see. Kiara, they ain't let me talk to you. Sheila says, no motivation. Sheila, you got to be your motivation. Let's talk motivation. Let me see. Let me see. I have no motivation. That's what you said. I have no motivation. Let me see. Let's bring Sheila on. We talking no motivation. Hopefully it'll let me bring you on. Let's talk about your no motivation self. Let's talk about it. Because I'm going to bring up some with motivation. Because you, you got to think deeper than what's on the surface. You see what I'm saying? Because anytime you say, I have no motivation, I'm going to flip it on you. Y- y'all ready for me to flip it on you? You ready? You ready? I'm going to give it to you. Okay? Think about it like this. There's a man in your life. You know, you get to know him. He's good looking. Okay, where do you see yourself in the next five to ten years? And he says, I don't see myself doing anything because really, I don't have no motivation. I don't have any. There's no incentive. I have no. What, what is my motivation? I don't. I mean, I'm, I'm good. Think about it. Would you want to date and deal and marry a person who is not motivated? Who is not aspiring to do anything? Who always uses the word, listen to me, discouraged? Would you date a man who, said, who says the following things? I'm not motivated. Man, I'm so discouraged. It's just so hard out here. You know what? I would have called you, but, you know, life just happened to me. You know, and I'm sorry about not getting with you last week. You know, life got in the way and I kind of felt, you know, I feel like I've kind of fallen off with this relationship. And I'm kind of discouraged, you know, with us. And you always hear the words, discouraged. I'm not motivated. Would you want to date somebody like that? Now, let me turn that that mirror back on you. So how is it okay for you to use those same words? Because we listen the same way. I mean, we listen. We listen for words like discouraged, not motivated. Those are not attractive words. Those are not words of power. Again, you would not want to deal with a man who constantly, who is constantly discouraged, unmotivated, unmoved, 
So why is it okay for you? It's not. So at some point, you got to say, you know what? I got to change my words and I got to start using words. You know, I got to start using words of power versus words of fear, words of doubt. Because sometimes you could get so used to doing that that you just miss out on life because you're too busy being discouraged. Let me see. She says, I'm scared to be with anyone at this point in my life. Can I bring you on? I'm trying to bring you on because I want to talk to you. Because um, cause anytime you say, you say I'm, I'm scared to be with Somebody at this point in my life? Hello. Hey. You ready to talk to me? Yeah. You look, look, are you ready, ready to talk to me? Yeah. What's going on? What's going on? Hey, sweetie. What's what's going yeah. on with you, darling? What's up? Hey, baby. Um, I'm just trying to get my life back on track, but I just been going through so much and I'm just like after all of the domestic violence and stuff I've just been having a hard time trying to be motivated and it's just I've been very discouraged you know and it's like as you can see with the domestic violence it left me blind in my left eye so you know I don't feel beautiful anymore and I just have a hard time trying to get back to myself I mean okay. I have my kids that they, they keep me going my mom keeps me going but it's just I feel like I want to do something on my own to keep myself going, and I just can't find it. Okay. Well, at this point in time, you know, at this point in time, you are you on the program yet? No, I'm doing. I'm like, okay. um, I'm with um, like a counseling group, but no, 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 no. I'm talking about my workout group. Um, no, I try. Um, like I try to get on sometimes, but um, it's like I always catch you like last minute. Look, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you free money, okay? Because you need to uh, be around beautiful and powerful people who add to you and multiply you, okay? So, I'm matter of fact, bump that. Let, let me give you a free six months. I'm going to give you a free... Let me give you six months because you need to be around us, okay? Now, let me give you something good. Let me get... Make your kids leave the room because I'm about to get real raw. Make, make the kids leave. Cause I'm about to okay. do my crook stuff. Yeah, go ahead. Make them go. Make them go for a second. Make them go, go for a second, ahead. please. No, I said in your room, not my room. Let Let me okay. give you something good. Okay. Sometimes you just gotta act like a man. Let me Let me tell you how how a man acts. You ready? That's the thing I'm acting too much like a man, and listen, I want to be a lady. No, 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 no. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm gonna teach you something. I'm teach you something. Stay with me. Okay. Sometimes you just gotta say, you know what? I got my ass whooped, but it's okay. This was the time of my life. The time in my life I got my ass whooped. But now I'm I'm gonna throw the ass whoopings now. Because the worst thing you can do is lose twice. You did the right thing, but you did it with the wrong person. Okay? Secondly, look, don't doubt your don't doubt your judgment. Stop doubting your judgment. That's why you're afraid to be with somebody, because you're afraid that you're gonna mess up again. Take the parking brake off. I just have Take trust issues. It's, like, it's been hard. It's okay. It's okay. The first thing we got to do is get you focused on you again. We got to build you back up because, you know, people have been tearing you down. You know. It's so much. Physically, physically beating on you. And I've never known a situation where somebody physically beats on you but didn't mentally beat on you either. I've never seen it. Okay. So for the next, do this for me. For the next 12 months, we're going to, your, your word is restoration. I need for okay. you to start replenish, replenishing and, and restoring yourself again because you've lost a lot in that last relationship, okay? But the worst thing you can lose, the worst thing you can do is lose twice to the same person who, who never should have had you in the first place. That's the worst thing you can do, to lose twice to the person you never should have been with in the first place. 
So so don't let don't let him win again. Okay. So the first thing we gonna do, we're gonna put you in our group and we're gonna have all them girls love up on you. And we're going to restore you. And we're going to make you feel good about <laughs> you. We're going to build you up. We're going to make you feel good about you. And guess what? You're going to find the man you were supposed to have in the first place. You're going to run off, get married. We're going to do the electric slide at your wedding. And life is good. <laughs> okay? That's, that's what, what we're going to do together. Can we agree? Okay. But the next 12, yes. but the next 12 months. But the next 12 months, I need, I don't care about the kids. I don't want it to be about your kids because you sacrifice for everybody else, your kids, your marriage, whatever. I need for you to focus on you. I need for you to be selfish about you. For the next 12 months, I don't care about nobody else but you. So can we agree that we're going to focus on you for the next 12 months? We're building you back up. Because, again, yes. you've been knocked down. Can we agree? Yes. Okay, because again, we got to get you back right, and we got to get you I loving you. I don't feel pretty again. Like I don't, I don't feel comfortable with myself. I don't even like going out, and I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm very discouraged. You know. Can I ask you, you a question? Know, I don't have friends anymore. It's like it's been so rough. Yeah. Can I, ask you, can I ask you a question? <laughs> do, do you have, do you have yes. trust issues? Trust issues, not not with other people, but do you have trust issues with yourself? Have you lost confidence in yourself? I feel like I have, yes. Because the first step is just being honest, you know, with yourself and just being like, you know, ain't no shame in, in saying, you know what, I, I don't trust my judgment anymore. Look, we've all been there. But it it's starts with taking there. small... Like, I just know, like like the heart that I have, it's like I'm I'm always trying to help and I'm always trying to give. And a lot of that I, I honestly have to say, I feel like a lot of that come from like me trying to me always trying to help and just knowing, you know what I mean that someone is like bad for me really paying attention to the signs. And then it's and you no know, until reality really sets in and it's just like with this situation I really almost lost my life. And it's Mm -hmm. It's sad to say, like, I, it had to take for me to almost lose my life for me to really wake up and realize what's right and what's not. And it's just, you know I me, mean? I beat myself up over it, but at the same time, I'm just trying to find a way back, you know? Because I know I want to be happy again. Can, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do, do, doing that relationship, in your mind, did you make up reasons why this was going on and, and kind of blamed yourself for it? Um, kind of. Because of my it was my kid's father. I have three children with this guy. And I was just, I was just like, I felt like, like you know, that was all I, I knew. I didn't feel like, you know, like I, I can do anything else. You know, I felt like he had me stuck, you know. And, and like, you felt like, 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 I just wanted know. my kid. Like, Okay, but again, you almost sacrificed your life because you thought it was what was best for the kids. Okay, but here's the thing. How is it benefiting your kids if you die? You're right, and if that's why I say I, it really took a hard reality check, and it's like that's when I realized, like, okay, like this is not what it is. It's not, you know, what I want is not what he wanted. And at the same time, just like, you know, just keep praying, and it, it's obviously what God didn't want. So, I'm like, uh, yeah, I have because to God, it. yeah, because God was looking at you like, um, I already told you what to do. I, I already and told you, know, you what to do. You can't, like, yeah, I'm because, yeah, to make because sometimes, go ahead. Right. No, what I was going to say was, you're beautiful. <laughs> You've given up a lot. You've given up a lot. You've given up a lot, and you've given up a lot for a lot of people. I'm ready to fight back. I want my life back. I want to be happy. I'm only 27 years old. And you done been through hell in the last, look, in the last few years. So look, if you gonna go through hell, if you gonna go through he hell, let's take you to heaven. Let's get you your heaven back. Let's get you your peace. Let's get you your joy. <laughs> so let's look. So look, welcome to the family. Because we're gonna help you get your life back. Thank you. Can we agree? 
I, you know, I got yes. you. Look, and, and you're going to yes. love all of the girls on the page because everybody on that page is so awesome and so supportive. And um, yeah, the, it's really a gift. And you're here for a reason. I mean, that, that was a reason why, you know, you basically say, you know what, I'm going through some stuff right now. There's, there's a reason why you're here. Yeah. There's a reason why you're here. So, last thing, and I'm going to leave you alone. <laughs> Let's agree to become more selfish. You, you've given way more <laughs> than you're supposed to. You almost gave your life away. <laughs> you know, big, big, then that's the ultimate sacrifice, giving your life away. Uh, but again, this is your time to focus on you for the next 12 months. Can we agree you're going to focus on you for the next 12 months? Yes, I promise. I can. Okay. This is my number here. Let me put my number here. Make sure you make sure you text me in the morning. And we're gonna put you on so you can, you know, be family with us. And you can get happy with us because again, uh our place is like Disney World. It's the most wonderful place on the planet. I don't even let anybody post anything negative on that page because I want everything to be all positive, all, you know, just beautiful. And that's what you need right now. Um, you need support. You need yeah, love. And I'm you like, I'm looking, I'm reading the comments and the girls are so nice. Thank you guys. Yeah. And that's how it is. I mean, that's what you're reading is what you get every day. You know, it's, it's inspiration, it's motivation. And most importantly, it's love and it's support and it's family and that's what you need right now. That's what you need. Yeah. That's what you need right now. Look, and we here for it. And we here for you. And I, look, we gonna love up on you every day. How about <laughs> Thank that? You. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, text, well look, what we'll text that's me in the morning, I'm gonna take care of you, okay? Thank you love guys. You. Love you. Hit me up tomorrow, okay? It's okay. See you, babe. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. That's sweet. Okay. Well, I'm about to break on y'all. But um, thank y'all for hanging and honest. You know, because um Honesty will honesty will get you a whole lot get you to the place where you need to be a whole lot faster than just acting like everything is okay and just you know wearing your mask and just smiling in public then when you get home it's a different story okay so thank y'all for hanging and thank you for being so transparent but you know look your, your better days are in front of you. Your better days are in front of you. Look, and I'm going to make sure it's in front of you. And I'm always going to remind you how beautiful and how awesome you are because that's what I do. So y'all have a great night. I have enjoyed y'all. Love y'all. Be good.